Hi everybody, John Bailey here, gemstone artist and founder of the International Faceting Academy. Welcome back to the studio and to another instructional video in the art of faceting. I'm going to start the video today with a little bit of a story from long ago. Once upon a time, way back in high school, a friend of mine and I were driving around in his car with a couple of cute girls. We were looking for a store in some unfamiliar part of town. He was an inexperienced driver, and with the rest of us in the car, and we were teenagers being teenagers, and did I mention the cute girls? He was definitely driving while distracted. So there was this incident, and if you watch the rest of the video, you'll learn how that incident worked out and how it's relevant to your success in faceting. Now, for the 100th time, even modern precision faceting machines don't produce, hold, or repeat to hundredths of a degree. Factory laps will usually flutter by around a tenth of a degree, and it's not unusual for them to flutter by two tenths and even more. Let's go over to the faceting machine and have a look. Full half inch thick lap, it's solid. This is bonded, it's not a topper. So we've got a rigid half inch thick piece of aluminum here. It's snug down nice and tight against our platen. We've got a nice piece of smoky quartz on our dop just from contact with the lap. We're making light contact under the weight of the quill and the weight of the stone on the end of it. When we turn this on in slow speed, we'll be able to watch our dial indicator to see how much flutter we're getting. This is a pretty flat lap. Typically we'll see more deviation than this, but this amount of flutter represents close to one tenth of one degree of deflection at the lap. If we turn our lap off and we put some fingertip pressure on our stone, we'll notice that fingertip pressure alone will create a tenth or more of deflection. And if I'm polishing a citrine like this or a quartz, if I'm polishing a quartz on an oxide lap, I'll be putting at least that much pressure, probably more, I'll probably use my fin fingertip and my thumb, and I'll probably be pressing enough to get two tenths worth of deflection. This is not a weakness of this machine. This machine is plenty rigid. If we take all this lap and Stop and everything. If we move it all over to an Ultratech and look at our V5 digital DAD readout, we're still going to be getting close to a tenth. This is the factory tolerances on good quality factory laps are going to be close to a tenth, quite often two tenths, sometimes even worse. And the rigidity of our system, once we start putting pressure on it with our fingertip or a thumb, perhaps just to get that good oxide polish, get good strong contact with the lap, you're going to be getting that deviation. So the idea of dialing in to the hundredth of a degree and that this equipment is going to hold and repeat to the hundredth is just not a thing. It's not going to happen. You might on a really good day with a lap that's been really well blueprinted and light pressure, you might be holding half of a tenth. You're not really repeating a tighter angle than that. In faceting, every mistake we make costs us time, aggravation, and quite often finished stone weight. Much of the faceting game is won by not losing, by not making mistakes. For some more detailed comments about winning by not losing, check out my video about competition cutting I'll put a link to that video in the description below. Little clutter and extraneous noise and the data that we're processing for a task, those things impose unnecessary cognitive load. It's sometimes called a bandwidth tax. And it's scientifically demonstrated to increase the frequency of errors. Now this proven relationship between overload and errors, that's the reason we have rules against things like distracted driving. And the newer the operator, the more likely the distractions are going to lead us into trouble. Now, you can read a diagram with angles expressed to hundredths 
and you can probably do the fourth or fifth grade skill of rounding those numbers right on the fly. Yes, you can probably do that. Sometimes. And sometimes doing that is going to lead to some issues with meets. And that'll just be some additional aggravation, distraction, and time loss. When you can just round the angles, that's always going to come at the cost of some distraction and mental load, no matter how experienced you are. Which means, no matter how experienced you are, more errors than you would make without the extra load. Which means more lost time and less finished weight. Which means more frustration and less money. Now, lots of old-timers didn't clean up the angles on their designs, or even organize the designs for efficient or easy sequencing. They didn't have software that lets you easily change angles or restrict the printout to decimal places in a single decimal. Not this easily. Or allow you to adjust sequencing by dragging and dropping. When I was a new faceter, both of those things gave me fits. Before I learned to analyze diagrams for strategic sequencing, I thought you just had to cut it in exactly the order it was written out. I tried to do that with the original version of the SuperPair 96, which if you've ever tried, you know doesn't work. And there are many other diagrams that are also literally impossible to cut as they're written down. Also early on, I thought maybe my facetron must be inferior because the protractor didn't read out in hundreds, and the diagrams were often expressed in hundreds. I lost count of the times that those extra digits were just enough extra distraction to push me over the edge and lead me into an error, or that trying to round them led me into problems with meets. If the designer you like doesn't clean up the diagrams for you, I recommend getting GymCAD or GymCut Studio and learning to do that for yourself. It's worth the time and the learning curve to ensure that the meets are going to come in as expected on your adjusted angles. You can also tweak the sequencing order and you can really wrap your head around exactly how the design is going to come together as you're cutting it on a real stone where you're really losing real weight in the real world. Whatever you do, I recommend getting rid of the ridiculous hundreds that none of our machines are holding. The newer you are, the more likely the extra distraction and bandwidth tax is going to trip you mentally. The more experienced you are, the less likely that little bit of extra cognitive load will trip you, but the more likely that when it finally gets around to tripping you, you're going to be working on something valuable, and it's going to lead to more loss than you'd really like to have. For anybody who's still wondering, the answer is no. Neither my friend nor I got even one date with either of the cute girls in the car who no longer wanted to ride around with a couple of distracted teenage guys who were getting them into accidents. I hope this video will help you remember to just say no to diagrams rendered in hundreds or to rounding on the fly. I hope it will encourage you to learn GymCAD or GymCut Studio, to advance your faceting skills and your faceting fun. To ensure you don't miss any future content, remember to like and subscribe to this channel. And you can find more helpful content, including instructional material to help you learn sequencing, design, polishing, even faceting business at facetingacademy.com. There you can also subscribe and become a member to get access to exclusive content and to support the production of content like this. If you have questions or requests for specific content, please leave them in the comments below. I do my best to answer all of those things. I hope to see you on the site or in the comments, and until then, good meets.